21st century. She is Renee Fleming, and Tammy caught up with her during her recent tour to our beautiful country. Her voice has been described as liquid gold, and she's won no less than two Grammys. She was the definitive voice for the soundtrack, The Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, and who can forget how she had viewers in tears at the inauguration of US President Barack Obama. Hailing from the prestigious Juilliard School of Arts in New York, this is Renee Fleming's first tour of South Africa. Last week, we had the privilege of attending one of Ms. Fleming's master classes, hosted at the University of Johannesburg. Bongani Tembe is the artistic director for the KwaZulu Natal Philharmonic Orchestra, and he's played a pivotal role in bringing Renee Fleming to South Africa. Fundamentally, what do you hope to achieve with this partnership and actually having Renee on our shores? She is really uh, one of the greatest and, and most prominent sopranos of the 21st century. So here, being here in South Africa, she kind of engenders really the love for opera and opening it to the wider public. And she's more of a public figure um, than most opera singers. So this really will promote music in the country, which is something fantastic. to that. Um, you've got that nice inhale. Now the last thing I want to see... An opera in this day and age, how do you feel about the power of opera? I think opera is the art form that puts all of the other art forms together. It's so passionate, it's powerful, and it spans multiple centuries. And I think storytelling in, in, the, in culture exists everywhere in the world. So opera is really not such a huge leap. How do you feel about the talent you've seen in South Africa? I know there's a tremendous tradition of singing uh, in, in all of the cultures. There are 11 languages, and in, a, in a, uh, a country where there's that much language spoken, people develop their ears. They develop, they, they can really hear fine tune and fine tune differences. So pitch, and some of the things that we have to train very hard for in the West, uh, and where I grew up, are, are, are automatic here because of that sensitivity. And then the voices themselves are just simply beautiful. You inspire so many. Who inspired you? You know, when I wrote my book, The Inner Voice, um, which was supposed to be about how I developed as a singer, what I discovered was that the most crucial part of that development was the mentoring process. And there wasn't one person, there were so many generous singers. We live in a culture in music where we give back, where ultimately we think we've got to encourage and nurture young talent because uh, learning how to sing the way we sing, which is cultivated, imagine that we're the Olympiads of singers. We're not amplified. We sing in multiple languages and it's just uh, in 400 years of music it requires so much training and I had lots of people who supported me I was very very lucky you blow people away when you step out on stage what goes through your mind when you're standing out there when I'm having a great performance, it's as if the entire art form is flowing through me and I'm not having to be involved or worry or think. There's, there's no distraction. And in fact, when I'm really having a great performance, I don't even think I'm singing, I'm speaking. I'm acting, I'm telling a story. And the voice takes care of itself. Is there any one memorable performance that really stands out for you? I mean, Barack Obama's inauguration, right? performing at Ground Zero after 9-11, oh. I think. Uh, you've, you've really touched people. Is there anything that stands out for you on a personal note? I think you're right. It's those moments when we have the opportunity to speak for everyone, our whole community, our whole country, or our generation. That's when we feel so empowered and so kind of, and also humbled by being given that task. I mean, um, speaking at Ground Zero a month after 9-11 is a perfect example. Looking at a sea, not, not of the general public, but of 9,000 people who, who, whose family members perished. Um, that, that felt like it, not only a gift and an honor, but a huge responsibility. Obama's gala, the, the gala for Obama, that was such a rush. 700,000 people in the audience and feeling so hopeful and so excited. And here we are 
outside Cape Town City Hall for Renee Fleming's final performance in South Africa. With tickets being sold out within the first two hours across the country, I can tell you the atmosphere is electric. I'm about to check in with the Lady of the Hour. Just before the performance, I'm dying to know, do you have any rituals you perform or are you superstitious or anything like that before you go on stage? I'm not superstitious, but I do take care of myself on performance day. You know, I call it the black cloud. I worry a little bit. I try to stay quiet. I try not to be very active. How does it feel to know that your tickets have sold out within the first two hours? I, I was very excited by that. You know, first of all, I didn't necessarily expect anyone to know who I was here, but these HD film uh, broadcasts from the Metropolitan Opera and this fall from the Royal Opera in London have really found an audience here in South Africa. I mean, that, that, that opera on that level can find its way around the globe it is, is an extraordinary gift. And what's amazing is that I was here 25 years ago for uh, this singing competition in um, uh, Pretoria, and somebody came, a couple of people came the other night and had the programs from when I won second prize, which I just thought, now that's incredible. When you hear a singer young, like for instance in the master class the other day, you can sort of pick your favorites and say, I think this one's going to make it. I think this talent, this, this person has a voice that I really love. And it's a lot of fun for, for lovers of opera to follow those particular young talents and see who makes it. So anybody who bet on me, I suppose, has, um, is, is happy now because <laughs> I'm back. I finally came back again. support of the arts. How did you find the opera tonight? I, I have goosebumps just talking to you. She must be the best in the world at the moment and she is not only exquisitely beautiful, she looks like a little, like a fairy tale princess, but she has this aura which exudes it, it's just, I'm sitting there and I'm just, I want to have 10 years because I want to hear every little nuance of her noise. I think she's outstanding. She's just a princess. She sings so nice like an angel. A lot of people are saying that they got it all emotional watching the performance tonight. How is it for you? It, it was like she was saying it's possible for us young artists coming up that, you know, this is uh, life, it's music and anybody can do it. And it was such inspiring and... She took us in her world as a performer, which was really awesome. 